Now, how is this done? It usually begins with learning to pick up your toys. For example, mother may say, Philip, I want you to pick up your toys, and then we'll have lunch together. Now, that little fellow heard the words, we'll have lunch together, but somehow he missed the instruction to pick up his toys. Strange, isn't it, that little children, as well as adults, often hear only what they want to hear. Now, what does the mother do now? She sets the example. She picks up one toy and encourages the little fellow to pick up another toy. When all the toys are in the toy box, mother picks up that little fellow and gives him a big hug and a kiss. Now, this makes him feel good. You see, early in life, we should learn that there is a good feeling when you learn to be a servant doing something to help someone else. After a few months, with the proper initiation on the part of the parents, that little boy will be able to pick up all of his toys without any help. Then, after he has picked up the toys, he waits for Mom to pick him up and give him a kiss. You see, there's that good feeling again. Everyone must learn to be a servant and learn that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Now, that's found in Acts chapter 20 and verse 35. We always experience a good feeling when we do something for others, and we learn servant manners by precept and also by example. Now, this is the way that Jesus taught his 12 disciples. Those disciples were all born dictators, and little by little they had to learn servant manners. Our old nature rebels at the thought of being a servant. Learning to be a servant is a difficult lesson. How did Jesus teach his disciples to be servants? Well, Jesus taught by example, not just by command. When I get to heaven, I'm going to ask those disciples how they felt at the close of that meal when Jesus brought in a basin of water wrapped himself in a towel, and began to wash the disciples' feet. Now, you'll find this recorded in John chapter 13 and verse 5. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel wherewith he was girded. How amazing that the Lord Jesus, who made this great universe, should now take the position of a lowly servant and wash his disciples' feet. Now, from the human viewpoint, this is not the road to success and greatness. But Jesus said, Whoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Now, that's found in Matthew chapter 20, verses 26 through 28. The Bible makes it very clear that if you want to be a success, if you want to be great in the eyes of the Lord, be a servant. Now, God is looking for men and women and children who will learn to be servants. Now, remember, servants are known for their activity. A servant is a worker. We all know that no one gets to heaven by their works. Because the Bible says, For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now that's found in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Salvation is a gift. Salvation is not of works, lest any man should boast. But after we are saved, then we learn to work for the Lord. With a servant, work is number one and talk takes the second place. I have taken Isaiah 41 and verse 6 as my verse for the year, and daily I am challenged by these words. They helped everyone his neighbor, and everyone said to his brother, Be of good courage. Now that's Isaiah 41 and verse 6. This is a description of the ministry of a servant. When we see someone in need, we must do what we can to help them, and then we can say to them, Be of good courage. The Bible says, If a man 
or woman be naked and destitute of food, and one of you say unto them, Depart, and be in peace, and be warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Now that's James chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. In other words, if you meet someone who is hungry, don't just say, Depart in peace and have a good meal. Instead, we should provide food for that hungry person. And after having offered him food, then the servant can say, Depart in peace. God bless you. Enjoy your meal. Now a servant is known for his work. And then the unsaved will listen as we share with them the word of God. Jesus said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now that's Matthew 5 and verse 16. We ought to let our light shine on Sunday and let the church family see our good works. But in this verse, the Lord Jesus is challenging us to let our light shine before the unsaved, those people that we work with, those unsaved people who live in our neighborhood. These are the people that need this message. A godly group of missionaries were working in a heathen country, laboring among people who were very reluctant to respond to the claims of Christ. A few of these missionaries met at a missionary retreat for Christian fellowship and mutual encouragement. One missionary couple reported, God blessed our efforts this year. We had the joy of leading one family to the Lord. The other missionaries responded saying, Praise the Lord for one family reached for Christ. The next couple reported, God blessed our efforts this past year, but there were no outward professions of faith. The other missionaries responded, saying, Praise the Lord, you were faithful in sowing the seed. The third couple reported, God blessed our efforts this past year. We led 17 families to the Lord. Immediately the question was raised, What is the secret of your success, leading 17 families to the Lord in only one year? The missionary said, My wife and I accepted God's challenge to be a servant, and we responded to Jesus' command to let our light shine before men, reflecting something of the life of Jesus in everyday life. Then we asked God to show us what we could do as servants to help these unsaved people. When one of the native's children became ill, they called us, and we responded promptly. Our shoes wore out very quickly during this past year. But you see, that goes with the life of a servant. After months of serving these people, they were now ready to listen to us as we shared with them the gospel. Friends will often write to us here, back to the Bible, requesting prayer for unsaved neighbors and unsaved relatives. And they will often add, How can they be reached for Christ if they won't listen to me when I share the scriptures with them? We, of course, commend these friends for their concern. We encourage them to follow the principle that Jesus outlined in Matthew 5 and verse 16. We urge them to be a servant, doing those things to help them. And therefore, we need not only to pray and ask God to show us what we should say, but we also should pray, Lord, show me what I can do to help them. And I'm convinced of this that God will arrange the circumstances. He will arrange the opportunities for us to help them. This takes a lot of time, but it's worth the effort. Letting our light shine before the unsaved is so important because we must live a consistent Christian testimony before them. The unsaved must see in our lives a reflection of Jesus Christ, and then by adopting these servant manners, they will be willing to listen to us as we share with them the Word of God. I was trying to reach a friend of ours for Christ, but he wasn't interested in the Bible. He had no time for the Scriptures. After asking God to show me what I could do to help him, God arranged an opportunity. It was a hot day, the temperature around 100 degrees, 
and my friend was trying to install a window air conditioner in his bedroom, but it wouldn't, it just wouldn't fit. My friend was calling this machine names that the engineers never considered. His language was punctuated with curse words. I offered to help him, and he said, be my guest. Let's see if you can install it. Now, the rule is, when everything fails, read the instructions. Well, the instructions were laying in a pile in the corner of the bedroom. I spread out the instructions on his bed, got down on my knees to study the instructions, and my friend knelt by the bed, and that was something he had never done before. Within 20 minutes, that air conditioner was installed and was pumping out cool air. My friend was delighted, and he said, You have made me very happy. How much do I owe you? And I said nothing.